Let's go ahead and start. In Sketchbook Express, I've already gotten a blue screen for my sky and labeled this drawing this week. It's called Two Point Perspective. Please repeat the name of each Sketchbook Express application icon after me. Gallery. Add new sketch. I for information. Undo arrow. Redo arrow. Brush editor. Draw styles. Free draw. Line tool. Rectangle tool. Circle tool. Symmetry. Text, transform, layers. Just like we did in our previous drawing assignment on perspective, we'll need to bring in a grid background. So please begin by pressing plus to add a new layer, using flower plus to go to your photo library, find that grid that we saved from Shobi. Oh, there's my grid. Now we're going to transform this layer. You can see how big my grid is. It does not fill up my layer. But if I go into transform and I use the scale icon, it has two squares on it, that drops a pin and it lets me scale or change the size of my grid. I'm done. Let's look at it in layers. Now when I look at it in layers, that grid fills up that layer. Now I need the grid on the bottom layer, my drawing area on the top layer, and I need to change the opacity. So I select that drawing layer by tapping on it. I get the blue rectangle around it. And let me reduce my opacity so I can see my grid through it. That's going to help me create lines that are parallel and lines that are perpendicular today. Now, when I return to my drawing surface, I need to use two fingers to pinch and reduce my ratio to about 90%. It doesn't have to be exactly 90. Mine was 91.4 that time. And that's going to let me draw my horizon line all the way off of my drawing area onto the artboard or workspace. So let's begin by using the line tool to draw a horizon line. Our cube today is going to be below the horizon line. So I'm going to put the horizon line up a little bit higher. Notice how I am following the lines on my grid and I'm drawing all the way off my drawing area. That's going to allow me to use fill bucket to fill my grass with green. That only works if you draw that line all the way off of the drawing area. Next, let's go back and get that pen tool again. We'll make it dark. I'm going to actually switch over to paintbrush for just a minute to do my two vanishing points. And I'm going to do two dots in on each side. You can see why I switched and, and made uh, my vanishing points using the paintbrush, it has a larger radius. So all I had to do was tap to put that dot down. Let me switch back to the pen tool. That's what I want to draw with today. And I'd like to use line tool. When we read step one here in our handout from Brenda Hodnett, it says use your ruler to draw a horizon line that's parallel to the top and bottom of a square or rectangular drawing space. That's exactly what we've done. But instead of using a ruler, we used our line tool to draw a horizon line that is parallel to the top and bottom of our drawing space. Let's own that word. Let's make sure we can all agree about the word horizon, H-O-R-I-Z-O-N, sometimes called the horizon line. And let's move that word to so there is fine. We're going to label our two vanishing points. We will call them VP1 and VP2. So when I press text again, I get the last word I typed, which in this case was horizon. I don't want horizon though, so let me use the X here in my text box to X that out or backspace using this arrow with the X on it right here. And I'd like to label this next one capital V, capital P, 1 for vanishing point 1. Let me move that text to where I want it, just above vanishing point 1. I'm done. When I press text again, I get the same word again. Let me move it up here where I can see it using move text. And let's make that vanishing point two. There's vanishing point two. And I'm done with that word. Let's see our next steps in the handout. Now, to draw that cube in perspective, we're going to draw a vertical line, AB, that is perpendicular to our horizon line. That represents the corner or edge of that cube, the edge that's closest to us. So again, we'll use line tool, and I'm going to line up on one of my lines on our grid. So my line is perfectly perpendicular 
or 90 degrees to my horizon line. That line is not perfectly 90 degrees. Let me press undo and try again. I want to get it straight up and down, straight vertical. I like that. That is excellent. Now let me label it using text tool. I want A for this endpoint. We'll call this line AB. Done. Text. And we'll label the endpoint at the bottom endpoint B. So this is line AB for our purposes today. And that is the front edge of our cube. Done. We'll return to our line tool. Next, we will draw a straight line from the upper and lower points of line AB to each of the vanishing points. So we're going to draw four lines. Two on, on the right side and two on the left side for line segment AB that converge on VP1 and VP2. I'm going to start at my vanishing point and bring it directly over to the endpoint A. And then I'll start at my vanishing point and bring it directly over to endpoint B. Notice they need to be very neat where they meet that endpoint. Then I'll move over to VP2 and bring that line segment over to meet A. Now that turned out very sloppy. Let me press undo arrow and try that again. Neatness counts, especially in artwork. Much better. Not perfect though. Let me try it one more time. Very good. And then I'll return to VP2 to do my line segment down to endpoint B. Very good. I'm pleased with that. Next, we'll draw lines CD and EF parallel to line AB. So these next two lines will be vertical and they will create two more edges to our cube, CD and EF. Now we need to make sure we're using our grid. I'm going to count over the same number of spaces in my grid. Let me zoom in so you can see what I'm talking about. For our cube, this cube is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 blocks high on my grid. I'm going to count over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I think I'll stop at six. Do a line segment for this edge. And then I need to count over six on this side. One, two, three, four, five, six. To do the line segment that terminates this edge. And we use text. We'll label this line segment C, D, And then we'll label the other line segment E. F. So there are three edges of our cube. The next thing we need to do is arrange the lines that create the top edges of our cube. So we'll draw straight lines that connect C to VP2 and E to VP1. So from E to VP1 and C to VP2. So from VP1 to E and VP2 to C. There we have our three faces of the cube. 